Hey guys, JP California here coming from you guys. Well, a beautiful, sunny Southern California, September 16th, 2022. Villa played Southampton. Let's get going with the five things we learned about Aston Villa against Southampton at home. Number one, and this might be one of our only negatives today, but injury concern. Just like our last win against Everton some weeks and weeks, and what feels like weeks ago, uh, we again got a win today, 1-0 win, but it did not come without some regret. There is an injury concern for our new favorite guy, Bubakar Kamara. He went off um, about the 50th minute, um, maybe even a little earlier, with what appeared just to be a little, a small ankle injury, it almost looked like he just got clipped and he went down. Um, but Steven Gerrard in the post-match came out and said he's worried. And Bubakar has to have a scan on it. Uh, which is not what any Villa fan wanted to hear. Um, and, and this is starting to add to a little bit of a defensive worry. Um, Bubakar Kamara being our holding mid. He is a Rolls Royce for us. He is way better than Villa. He deserves better than what the season has given him so far. Um, but man, he cleans everything up. But with him being injured, that adds to Diego Carlos. Our two key buys this summer, both out injured. Diego Carlos out for like eight months, and we're only one month into it, and we're feeling it. Uh, Matty Cash, who was also injured in the Man City game two weeks ago, he's still injured as well. Uh, many people will believe he will be back after the... Uh, international break that we have the next two weeks off but this does start to add a little bit of a worry if Bubakar Kamara is out for a month two months whatever it may be it's a good thing we've picked up uh, Leander Dendonker uh, but that he's not the same as a Bubakar Kamara Bubakar Kamara has been arguably the standout performer for Villa this season and to have him go down so early in a match, in a match that we were well in control of, and there was not that much. It wasn't a back and forth. This wasn't a slugfest of a match. This was kind of a slower match. Um, it just, it, it really hurts, and it's starting to, to weigh on the Villa fans' minds. And, and what we learned about this is not that any injury could be a long-term one, and, and one more, and we're in, we're in trouble. Uh, so number one, injury concern. Number two... Debut for Den Donker. Lander Den Donker came in about the 67th minute, giving him about 25 minutes to show what he got. And what did he get? Three touches on the ball. Three touches. Uh, but one of those was an aerial clearance. And for me, it was not about the touches because the ball just didn't really get to him. It's going to take him a few games to get up to speed. Uh, but for me, what I did like was what I saw off the ball. There's a few times when Douglas Luiz would uh, step up to support Philip Coutinho, Buendia, uh, John McGinn. They were bad. There was a few battles over there on the left wing, um, and he would step in to support them. And when he did this, I noticed and Donker would shift in behind. And that's super important. A guy who's naturally defensive like that with Kamara out, with... Dougie Louise playing in that role, um, he gives us that 6-8 combo where Douglas Louise is really a 6 who wants to be an 8, right? He's a guy who's more offensive than he is defensive. He can just move the ball really well and control the ball well. Then Donker is that big wrecking ball. And, and with three touches, but one of them already is an aerial duel, I can see his impact. I just want him to get up to the, the pace quicker. This would have been a perfect game to give him his debut but it wasn't to come but I'm still happy with Den Donker's debut even if he might not be because he was not on the ball near enough so number two Den Donker debut number three Philip Coutinho the enigma what are we going to do about this guy he has performed terribly terribly for 14 games now, a terrible sign. 
He gets cut from the Brazil team, and what happens? He gives a rare, really, really good performance. He didn't have a goal. He did not have an assist. He did have three key uh, shots. He had one key pass. He had a 92% pass rating, and he had 64 touches on the ball. One of our highest guys with touches on the ball. He performed well. He did very good considering the pressure. Steven Gerrard made sure and noted two days ago, a day ago, in his pre-match presser that Philip Coutinho is playing, practicing out of his skin good. We at Villa fans have heard that a thousand times. So-and-so is practicing well. They're ready to come back. Or this is going to happen. And it's bullshit. But for me, Philip Coutinho played well today. He looked like he had been practicing well. He looked like the Philip Coutinho when he first came. Now, he's not lighting the world up with goals and assists like he did against other teams. But, for me, he played well. And not only did he play well, the guys around him played well. Right? So, that to me is super impressive. When he plays well, guys like Luca Dean, Aaron Ramsey, or I'm sorry, Jacob Ramsey, uh, Bubakar Kamara... Ole Watkins, they all play better too because he is getting touches on the ball, he's controlling the ball, he's not getting dispossessed, and he's picking passes. So for me, Phil Coutinho, you play like that, you get a play. You don't play like that, you don't get a play. It's just that simple. Number four, average player positions. I brought this up the other week, that, or a few weeks now, that Villa's average player positions seem to be scattered around. Our left mid, left forward seem to be way too close together. And as we can see in this picture, it was much, much better this time around. What you get is you get your center backs having a key triangle with Bubakar Kamara or Lu Douglas Luiz making that a really nice triangle. You see both outside defenders wide and up, but just around the halfway line. There were several games where Luca Dean or Matty Cash were far beyond that halfway line, and we don't want that too gung-ho nature, so there's too much room in behind. So to see them not as high up was really nice. There was a clear switch in John McGinn playing left center mid compared to Jacob Ramsey, who was on the right center mid. That hasn't been the case. Jacob Ramsey's been on the left all season. So to see them switch in position, actually to me, was very intriguing. And I really liked what it did. John McGinn can collect the ball across his body and go wide. He can take his touch wider because when he's on the right, every time he comes into the middle, he gets dispossessed. He's just not technically savvy enough to dribble into players. So to see him on the left was, was really beneficial. And I think Jacob Ramsey just overall played better on the right he was able to press differently he was able to collect and dribble at pace I just really liked him on the right his goal while amazing was nothing short of miraculous he sits there on the PK spot for half of that time while the ball's bouncing around until he pokes it in but the average player position today was about the three forwards again we didn't have a left forward stuck with our left center mid again we had three center forwards who were distinctly center forwards. And again, they looked like they had to go pass around them to get in and up the field, much like the natural average player position was against Man City. So for me, that is a huge teller if Villa are going to be successful in our games. Are we able to hold an average player position like we should? Do we not get moved around? Do we, do we run out of position? Those are all key items for me when it comes to Aston Villa's success. So, number four, average player position. And number five, it starts from the back. Everything we want to do starts from the back. And for me, Konza played good. And you know, I haven't been very impressed with Konza this season. He was all in all solid, only making really two errors in my mind. One was a missed header from a corner free kick wide nearing the, about the 25th minute mark left, 75 minutes in. He gets up for a header. It goes right over him, and the guy has a free header. Um, for me, though, there was one major issue, and that was when 
there is a ball played up to their forward, and he backs off it at the last second for the ball to bounce, and Martinez is coming out, and Martinez jumps over him to get the ball. Now, I want Konza to win that ball, but if that's your one mistake of the game, I I'm okay. Um, he played much better. But the man who played even better was that was Tyrone Mings. My God, Tyrone, you played like old you. The dominant, aerial present, aggressive captain that you are to this Villa team. You were successful in 100% of your aerial duels and 100% on your ground duels. Nobody got around you. You were Aston Villa's Van Dyke today, and it was amazing to see that was the performance I've been waiting for you for a long time. That's the performance that you need to put five, six, ten of those games together to get back into the England squad. And it starts right with that one. Tyrone Mings, man, you were right there in my man in the match, dude. You destroyed. So for me, you, Konza, um, really played really well. Uh, the center back pairing of Aston Villa just looked on it again. But then again, Southampton didn't offer a whole hell of a lot. We weren't playing Man City. Um, we were just playing a, a Southampton. And to me, a Southampton, a Southampton side that looks a little lost, a little confused, and just a little out of it. Um, so for me, those two things have to be key. We have to have good center back positioning, good center back play, and we have to have a, an average player position that makes sense for Aston Villa to be successful in the Premier League. Now, that's two for two, a tie against Man City, which is very impressive, and a 1-0 win against Southampton. It was a little less impressive, um, but I still want to see us grinding out some of these positions because, to me, we should have won against West Ham, and we haven't. We should be at least three to four points higher up the table than we are. So, Villa, keep needing to climb. Let's go over those five things we learned about Aston Villa. One, injury concern. Number two, Bubakar Kamara debut. Number three, Philip Coutinho. Baby, get back in form. Number four, average player positions. And number five, it starts from the back with Tyrone Mings and Ezri Konza. Guys, this is JP California coming at you guys from California. Shocking. And that is the five things we learned about Astonville. Please like and subscribe. Give me a comment. Get at the North End YouTube channel. Give us a follow. Watch us. Check us out, guys. We got a lot of different content. We got Man U supporters. We got Liverpool supporters. We got that white team, whoever they're called. We got them. We got a bunch of teams here. We're trying to grow the channel. Come out and subscribe. Give us a support. Give us some comments. Give us some hate. I don't give a shit. But do something. Don't just sit there and twiddle your thumbs. It's JP California signing out. This is the North End.